Attempting to sell what you make without any type of purpose behind it is the quickest way to not only waste a lot of time, but also destroy a hobby that you first got into it because you loved it. I've talked to so many people who've experienced a ton of burnout just in their wood shop alone because they really just wanted to make a little profit, sell some things that they make on the side, and that ended up creating just a ton more work and stress than they were first looking to get into and left them with a feeling of failure rather than a feeling of accomplishment. What you're about to watch is the purpose module on my course, How to Sell What You Make. It is completely free and it's standalone, so you can watch this and learn a little bit of something without having to get into the rest of the course. But if you are interested in the rest of the course, it is linked in the description below this video. So without further ado, this is the purpose module for how to sell what you make. In this module, we're not really talking about the purpose of the specific items that you're making. We're more going over the purpose of why you actually are trying to do this. Now I know that the reasonable answer for most people is going to be money. Well, Hamilton, I'm trying to sell what I make so that I make money. And you're not wrong, but also that can lead you down a path that from what I've seen in my personal life is not really that sustainable. So in this module, we're gonna be covering two things specifically. We're gonna be covering the piece index, which is gonna help us identify so much about why we're actually selling the things that we make. And then we're gonna be going over the five fishermen of selling what you make just to kind of get out of the mindset of the shop and woodworking and everything and help understand the different types of shops out there and how they operate and trying to sell what they make. Both the piece index as well as the five fishermen of selling what you make are the entire groundwork for the rest of this course and are extremely important in understanding everything else that I'm gonna be talking about. Okay, so let's go over the piece index. As some of y'all might already know, I used to work at an inpatient rehabilitation center teaching woodworking and that whole entire job was a ton of fun. There were ups and downs. It was a blast. I learned so much through the entire process. And the Peace Index was a tool that we used in the program to be able to further understand and elaborate on how somebody was feeling. I found that it was incredibly helpful for my life and it's something that I use on a monthly basis. So let's very quickly go through the Peace Index and understanding why you're trying to sell the things that you wanna sell. All right, so first and foremost, go ahead and just get a piece of paper because we're just gonna very simply jot down a few words and a few numbers and we'll be done. On this piece of paper, I want you to write five words. I want you to write people, place, purpose, provision, and physical. All of these start with P. That makes it a little bit easier to remember if later in life you want to be able to do this and jot it down on a napkin. We're just going to be writing those five things down. People, place, purpose, provision, and physical. Now next to each one of these, we're gonna be assigning a number from one to 100. 100 is the very best that it could possibly be. Literally, it could not get any better. And one is going to be things are the worst. Uh, they couldn't get much worse than this. Everybody's gonna have a different grading to this and how they view these things. And we're gonna work through these one at a time. So people, this is who you're currently surrounding yourself with. This isn't specifically talking about just your life overall and how things were as a child and how you hope them to be. This is right now what's currently going on in your life, the people that you're surrounding yourself with. This is gonna be your family, your coworkers, the people that you're seeing on a daily basis. Uh, one would probably be like, I'm not happy at all with my current situation and I just wanna be able to get away from this. 100 is I cannot imagine a better life. For me, that's a 90. I work very hard, this is one of the top things on my list as far as what makes me happy and what drives me for my goals. And the only thing that could be better on my list is if my best friends actually lived closer. Um, but thankfully we've got video chats and that solves a lot of our issues. So for me, that's at a 90. For you, that might be at a 20. <laughs> Write down exactly how you feel because being completely honest and open with yourself is gonna help you identify where you're currently at and either how to get away from that and chasing something better or being able to appreciate where you're currently at in the best way possible. Okay, so on to place. Place is super specific, it is regional. How are you happy with actually where you live? Um, this is going to not only be like your current home, but also the city that you're in. Are you happy with where you currently are? Literally, physically on the world where you currently are. For me, this is an 85. Um, I feel like the majority of the time I kind of float around an 85 for most things because physically it doesn't really matter that much, but I do have some great perks. I've got my shop in the backyard. We've got a wonderful house. I love the city we're in. It's got a great educational system that my daughter is hopefully going to be one day going into. And when I look around at where I'm currently at, that's an 85. Uh, when I used to ask guys this in rehab, they would always be like, well, I'm in rehab, so yeah, that's a one. And that's great to understand that and write that down. Because most of those guys, once they got acclimated into the rehabilitation center and kind of understood where they were, that number boosted up to 100 because they're like, I am not where I was. I'm currently in a very safe, healthy place that's very nurturing that is helping me get to where I want to be. So that number might be different for you, but for me, it's an 85. 
On to the next one, purpose. For me, this is just the top of the list. This is the driving factor for everything in my life, and it's something that fluctuates quite often based on what I'm doing that month. And if I'm being honest with myself, sometimes it's below 50 and other times it's really at 100. And this number really does bounce around a whole lot. So purpose might not be that important to you, but for me, it really is. Right now, currently I'm at a 75. And the reason that I put that specifically is because I've got a lot of goals in the purpose area and how my life is really moving forward. For some people, this is going to be like a spiritual or a religious type of thing. And other people, this is just going to be, am I positively impacting the things around me that I care about. So once again, go ahead and slap down a number with that where you're currently feeling as far as your purpose is concerned. Okay, provision. This is where the majority of people are immediately going to see something and have a reaction to it. Uh, on a scale of one to 100, are you happy with the amount of money that you're making? The things that you're able to provide in your life, maybe that's for loved ones, maybe that's for yourself, but the actual provision. Uh, most people, when thinking about selling things that they make, um, they specifically would like to make money, right? So when you think about the provision aspect of where you're currently at, uh, that's not gonna be strange for that to be a lower number. For me, that's an 80. I have set up my life in a way where I understand where my money is gonna be coming from and how to sell the things that I make. Would I like for the amount of money that I make every single month to be higher? Yes. Do I understand what it takes in order for that to be higher? Yes. So with those two things in mind, it normally floats around an 80. And then last but certainly not least is physical. And I say certainly not least, but on my list, um, that is the least important thing is the physical aspect of things. I know as I get older, that will probably climb up. And the truth is one of my best friends, uh, physical is on the top of his list. He is by far the most physically fit person that I know. And if you were to ask him on a scale of one to 100, how he is feeling, he would probably say a 40. And that's because he is constantly striving to be more physically fit, to set goals and to be able to crush them. So for me, I'm at a 75. I'm not a very physically fit person, but currently where I'm at in life, it really doesn't mean as much as the other things on this list. So for you, that might be a one. It might be a 100. Maybe you have some type of physical ailment that you're thinking like, oh, I'm down in the dumps about and this thing couldn't be worse. So I'm at a one. And that's okay. Write how you currently physically feel. Because you have some type of physical ailment doesn't mean that you have to always be feeling at a one. Some days you can be feeling at a hundred about that, other days about 50. So for you, just be honest with yourself and write down the number that you currently know that you're at. Once you have all these numbers written down, just add them up. So I had a 90, 85, 75, 80, and a 75. For me, that adds up to 405. 405, we're going to be dividing that by five because of the five things that make up the peace index. And that gives me a total number of 81. And that is currently where my peace lies, is at an 81. So going through this process in rehab was always a very interesting thing to me because you could have two guys coming from the exact same two circumstances and they would respond very differently towards it. I remember this one instance in particular and probably they'll never forget about it. When I would do this, we would all be in a circle and we would go through one at a single time. So we would go through people. And I would look at one guy and say, well, people, how do you currently feel about what's going on right now? And this guy looked over and was like, this is the worst thing that I've ever been a part of. I'm around a bunch of people that are reminding me what a failure I am on a consistent basis. I don't feel like I belong here. But when I look around and see the people here, I absolutely hate who I am and who I'm around. People's a one. And there would be dead silence in the group. And when we went on to the next person, the guy was like, well, it's a hundred for me because I've never had friends and all these guys are in the same place as me. And I'm just really happy that I have people to rely on for the first time in years of my life. It was so interesting because depending on who you are and what is motivating you, you're gonna have different reactions to this. So when you look at this list of five specific things, go ahead and put up top, what is the most important thing to you? And that can change right now. The most important thing for me is purpose. Uh, provision kind of hangs out in the middle and like I said, physical is at the very bottom. But for you, maybe physical is at the very top and then provision's right underneath that. Maybe provision is the only thing on this list that matters to you at all and people place purpose and physical could just not even be a care in your world. That's perfectly fine. That is what is driving you to be able to sell what you make 
And I think that that's really important because if people is at the very top of that list, there are certainly ways to sell the things that you make that puts people at a priority. You would much rather be in community with people on a regular basis and the things that you make are just an avenue for you to be able to interact with those people. So hopefully you've been able to take the time to be able to identify where you're currently at in life and what is driving you, what is important to you, what is not important to you, because that's gonna be important for the next section of this module, which is the five fishermen of selling what you make, where we're going to identify five of the many, many, many types of people out there and how they actually sell the things that they make. All right, so the five fishermen of selling what you make is just a very simplified version of the different types of makers and how they sell things that I've been able to identify. Certainly there are way more and this is just a very general explanation to be able to set a really great foundation and framework moving through the course. But without this, it's gonna be really hard to understand what I'm talking about in the other modules. So that's why we're talking about it right now in the purpose section. Because selling things in a lot of ways is a lot like fishing and probably not in the ways that you think. Um, oftentimes people think that fishing is luck and it's just kind of like hopefully understanding what's happening. And people who actually fish understand that there's a slight amount of luck in it, but there are certainly people in this world that can go to any riverbank and tell you the statistical probability of where the fish are most likely going to be in that river and what you should be using in order to catch them. And that's where I really wanna be at right now because you might be thinking, well, I only have this amount of shop space, I only have these tools, and I have all these controls restrictions that are holding me back. Instead of realistically looking at that and thinking you already have all these things in place that are gonna be extremely helpful for you. And until we understand the five fishermen of selling what you make, it's gonna be really hard to see all of those things as the positives that they really are and being able to unlock your potential of where you're currently at rather than telling you, oh, you need to spend an additional $10,000 on all this other stuff in order to achieve all of these other things. Let's rein all that in and understand where we're currently at and what other people are doing out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock the most popular one off the list, and that is going to be the peer fisherman. That is gonna be like your classic maker, the person who's making some stuff who might even open up an Instagram under a name that they've created, and they're putting some stuff out there into the world just seeing if anything bites. They are surrounded by other makers. They're constantly being inspired by what other people are making and maybe even just straight up ripping off other people. It is very cyclical in your understanding of how to sell what you make. You might see somebody else with 100,000 followers and they put up a product and it gets 3,000 likes and you might think that is what I need to sell. So you create one yourself, you throw it off your side of the pier and you hope that something is going to bite. On this pier, there are gonna be countless people who have been doing this in their entire life and who understand realistically what is going to feed them for that day and the days where they're just kind of spending time with friends. Uh, anybody can go out and buy a miter saw and start and be a pier fisherman, but that certainly doesn't mean that you have the best or the worst equipment out there. It just means that you're another person on that pier. The type of equipment that you have is not gonna be incredibly specialized. Therefore, you can drop a ton of things off of that pier and hopefully get something. One of the massive positives is there is a ton of community. You can meet other people, you can talk to other people consistently. I keep on bringing up Instagram, but that is a lot of what I see out there is that community feeling about being able to sharpen each other and being able to iterate ideas and be able to create some really cool things together. Making a full-time living as a peer fisherman is extremely easy to do and it's something that's very attainable and it's where I see a ton of people interacting. So number two is the bass boat fisherman. This is what I did for a very long time. It's when you have a pretty specialized shop and you're a one person operation. And I kind of look at this at building farmhouse tables. No matter where you're at in the United States or probably the world, you can find somebody on Facebook Marketplace who is selling farmhouse tables. They understand what their purpose is. They make the things that they make. They know what time of the year the fish are gonna be biting. They understand the amount of work that they need to do in order to be able to cover their bills. And with that specialized equipment comes a greater understanding Understanding of what they need to do because the more specialized equipment that you get in your shop the more pinpoint your projects are going to be you're not going to be offering a ton of different customization outside of the regular furniture maybe every once in a while you take on a few special jobs but at the end of the day you understand that your purpose just like a bass boat fisherman is to make tables like I said I did this for a very long time and there's a lot of money to be made in it but there's also a ton of client interactions so for me that is one of the drawbacks whereas for a lot of y'all that is going to be one of the massive positives because a ton of people absolutely absolutely crush client relations, whereas me, I really don't. So as a recap, the Bass Boat Fisherman is specialized equipment and they understand exactly who they're selling to, but knows the type of clients that they're looking for and they throw back smaller fish. So number three is the Lobster Fisherman. This is something that I've gravitated a lot towards and it's something that has made up the hybrid nature
nature of where I kind of interact with this in number five. But the lobster fisherman knows their lane. They are setting out lobster traps in predefined places. They're setting those out every single day. They're going back out and picking them up. They know that they're not going to be surprised by the results. These people have local stores that are setting up and maybe even an Etsy shop or a website, but they are making things that are going in those stores that they know are going to be producing them income. And maybe if they're just putting one lobster trap out there, it's not producing enough income for them, but they know that if they put out eight lobster traps, that certainly they're going to be making enough money to be able to cover not only their expenses, but also make a good living at it. I see a ton of people doing this. There is no custom work involved. They're just making the things that sell and putting them in the places that they know that people are going to be buying these things. This is going to come with some very specialized equipment. You're going to be making the same thing over and over and over again in repetition. You're probably not going to be taking on any custom jobs. And realistically, you're not going to be dealing with clients beyond shipping and a few interactions here and there. But when somebody pops up and asks for something extremely custom, you're normally just going to say no and move on to the next thing. These are the people who have multiple stores around their area and they understand exactly how much money is coming out of each one of those stores. Maybe each store is only producing $400 of profit each month, but they've got five stores and they know that they're making $2,000 purely off of profit off of those stores. And that gives them enough financial stability where they're able to chase some of these side projects that they hope might sell but don't really know if they're going to or not while still producing their bread and butter and being able to cover all their bills and expenses. All right, so number four is the deep sea fishermen. And in my mind, these are like cabinet shops, small cabinet shops that are doing highly custom cabinetry for people's homes, kitchens, built-ins, stuff like that. They are not going after small clients. They are certainly not taking their highly specialized deep sea boat and tying it up to the pier and dropping down and hoping they catch a flounder. Although this certainly can be a one person operation, normally there are gonna be a few involved in this entire operation and they're going after tuna. The deep sea fisherman has a very high overhead, but there's also a ton of profit in it. They're not worrying about a daily basis if they're able to find clients or if their Etsy listing has sold. Maybe they only need six or 12 clients a year in order to be able to meet the exact amount of money that they're looking to make, but they're not wasting their time on anything small. They're gonna be highly customized, very impactful long projects that are going to give them a huge payday at the end of the day. Their clientele is going to be massively different than somebody who's buying something cheap on Etsy who might be a little bit disappointed by a finish. These people are the people who are wanting a perfect product and are willing to pay the amount of money and wait the amount of time in order to be able to receive that in their home. There is a ton of headache wrapped up in this, but there is so much reward. So when looking at the deep sea fishermen, you're gonna have a highly specialized purpose-driven shop that exists to be able to produce one specific thing, even if that thing is highly customized. So custom kitchen cabinets, custom built-ins, conference room tables, that type of thing. All right, so number five is the jet ski fisherman. And this is something that I've really gravitated towards. So if you've been in the fishing world at all, you've probably seen jet skis that are purpose built for fishing come onto the market within the last few years. And a lot of people see those things and immediately turn their nose up to them because they're extremely expensive. And the immediate reaction to them is why would you spend that amount of money on a jet ski that is meant for one person when you could spend that same amount of money on a boat that you could have multiple people on it? And to that I respond because of the amount of possibilities that are in it. People take these jet skis deep sea fishing. People take these jet skis back into backwater. They put them in lakes and you can put them on rivers. There are so many possibilities for it. It's gonna be light, it's gonna be nimble, and it's also not really purpose driven for any of those things, but it puts you in the same water as a lot of these other purpose driven things. So when I look at the average hobby CNC machinist, they're at their home, they don't have any overhead, they're not having a separate shop out there. Maybe you make custom closet organizers. And realistically, you only need one client every single month and you know that that closet's going to be paying you a few thousand dollars and that's what you're going after. Or you can take that exact same jet ski and tie it to the pier and throw down and catch some flounder if you want to. You can have that whole community organization where people understand who you are, where you're showing up. To me there is a ton of positivity in the jet ski fisherman because the way that I'm currently using it is being much more like the lobster fisherman where I have a few set stores out there both physical and digital to be able to set up my shop and life in a way that is consistently bringing in income while being able to have the time and space to also chase after some other things that might not be as reliable, but maybe bring me more joy and purpose in what I'm doing. But hopefully these five have given you a good understanding that there is a difference between all of these people and you have to kind of understand what you're going for in order to achieve it. Because if you're a jet ski fisherman, one of the main drawbacks to that is you can start looking at everything as a possibility and not achieve anything. Obviously, there's an infinite number of ways to run a business depending on what your goals are and what you're realistically trying to make. That's why it is so important for us to be able to do the piece index and understand why we're trying to sell the things that we make and then just take a look at five of different examples of the fishermen of selling what you make. 
because this has given us a really great foundation that we're going to be constantly referencing back to in the rest of the course. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're interested, you can check out the links below this video. The course is all about changing your mindset when it concerns how to sell the things that you make, and I hope that in some way a little bit of this was enlightening and helpful. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members for your continued support. I have added on another tier, and I have huge plans for 2024, but until then, just know that I have added a Discord. It is a private Discord server just for my Patreon members. I've got a ton of really cool stuff planned for that, so if you're currently one of my Patreon members and you use Discord, go ahead and hop over. It's where I'm hanging out. And also, since this video is on YouTube, I am still going to be doing the exact same thing that I've been doing with all my other videos, showing you how long it took to film and edit this video in particular. And yes, it is massively skewed because this is just one module in the entire course, but I do still want to be able to talk about that this is a video that exists on my YouTube channel and it took time and effort in order to create it. So that is the number. If you're confused about why I'm sharing that number, I'm adding up all of my videos at the very end of the year so that I can understand exactly how much I made versus Google AdSense and figure out my hourly rate when it concerns this YouTube channel. If you're interested in what that looks like, that video will be coming out early January 2024 where I'll be talking about all the finances behind my YouTube channel. Really excited about doing that. Hope y'all are as well. Once again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you and see y'all later.